Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing here with... Ivan LaCroix. Mr. Rinsless Wash himself. Well, Mr. Efficiency. All right, this guy's been in the industry for a while. He is the one to talk to about rinseless washing your car. And Ivan, you get this question all the time about rinseless washing. Is it really gonna save me time? Yes, it is. And for the professional detailer, it is going to save you time and actually do a better job than the soap and the foam cannon and all that. Now for the hobbyist at home, yeah, the soap, the foam cannon, all that is fun, but sometimes you don't have the time to do that and you just wanna get out and wash your car. And for the, you know, again, the person at home, it's actually faster to rinse us wash your car in your driveway at home than it is to drive to the car wash, go through the car wash, come home. The reason we wanna do this on a GoPro is because I wanna show you everything unedited. And what I wanna show you, Ivan and I talked about this, how long does it really take to rinse us wash your car? We're gonna play it in real time, zero editing. Yeah, now before we do that, Nick's gonna walk around and show you what the car looks like because I always get the comment, well, the car's not really dirty. Well, in this case, it is dirty. All right, why don't you walk us through? And then, uh, well, I guess we're on the Subaru, black Subaru. Right, so black Subaru, we're outside. It's got uh, all sorts of fun stuff going on. It's got spray from the wash. The uh, wheels are a little dirty. The uh, owner of this car said he hasn't washed it in three months. And if we come around to the back end, he's obviously gone down a dirt road. Oh yeah, it's dirty here. Yeah. Okay, I would classify this as a dirty car. Right, it is. Now, from 50 feet away, it looks great. <laughs> but up close, it is dirty. Now, first of all, we're gonna show you from A to Z how to prep and everything. So we're beside my bus and you know we're definitely outside, we're in a parking lot. So first thing is putting water in the bucket. Which anyone with a hose can do. Right. And if you don't have a hose, you're in a condo or something, it's just as simple to, you know, pre-fill your bucket first. And there we go. So now we have three gallons of water in there. That's all we really need. Are we counting this on the time yet, or are we going to start when we start? Oh, we can count this on the time, too. All right, we'll start the timer right now. Folks at home, stop yeah. what has begun. And we have a really uncooperative bottle here. What is this bottle? Uh, about to be broken. <laughs> so uh, It's also the real world, right? Yeah. So nothing's perfect. So, We're so, out here on these streets. Yeah, there we go. So this is a rinseless wash. It's an experimental one. And it's half an ounce to a gallon. We have three gallons in there. A cap full is half an ounce. And that's dilution ratio for most rinseless washers. Some of them are actually, uh, you know, half an ounce to two gallons, and some are one ounce to a gallon. But this one is half an ounce to a gallon. And no, we're not telling you what brand it is because it's actually not on the market yet. I have the privilege of getting to use products like that a lot. Now we're going to pre-spray the vehicle and we're going to pre-spray the vehicle using a little pump sprayer and any pump sprayer will do. But instead of fretting about how much do I have to put in this to get the right dilution, just take some out of your bucket. It's not that difficult. This is a Marilex sprayer, but if you have a trigger sprayer, whatever you've got, doesn't matter. And now we're going to pre-spray the vehicle. So we have to pump up the sprayer. Tight shot. Yeah. Uh, now, the other thing about sprayers like this, obviously this one seems to have a leak, but anyways, the thing about sprayers like this is if you fill them up too much, you don't have room for air. And yes, this is real life. We have background noise. Don't worry about it. All right, walk me through the technique here, Ivan. I'm just getting it on the surface. And the rinseless is going to encapsulate the dirt and make it safer to remove. Look, we've been talking rinseless wash for years. Are you talking to the hater out there, the detailer, or are you talking to the DIY guy who's just starting out? What? Both. Who do you want to send this message to? Well, actually to both. You know, to the do-it-yourselfer, you can actually do this at home without any stress, without damaging the vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. For the professional, put away the foam cannon. You don't need it. 
And you know the people that say, oh, well, my customers like to see the foam cannon. Your customer doesn't care how you wash the car. Your customer is paying you to wash the car. But Matt Mormon says the customer wants to see the foam. I'm giving Matt a hard time. I've done a video. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he no, would say Matt, he agrees, but yeah. that's a whole other story. Right. Matt's a great guy. That being said, how often have you had a customer sit there when you were running your detailing business actually watch you wash the car? I think for a while when you were, you know, years ago, a real promoter of rinseless, there were some haters out there who said it would damage the paint. And, and I, I saw you get to a point where you're pretty okay with the pre-rinse. Folks think it's going to scratch up their paint. How important is the pre-rinse to the rinseless wash uh, it, process? It isn't. Uh, and if you have a hose at home, just use your garden hose to pre-spray the, the vehicle or to bring off the dirt. And actually, by pre-spraying with the rinseless, it's actually safer than using a pressure washer. And the reason I say that is when you're using a pressure washer, what are you doing? You're taking 2,000 pounds of pressure or 1,500 or 3,000 or whatever, and you're actually moving that dirt along under high pressure. But now we're going to let it encapsulate. You notice I didn't do the roof, I didn't do the hood. It's not necessary. There's not enough dirt on there to warrant pre-spraying. But again, a rinseless doesn't mean you don't pre-rinse. A rinseless means you don't rinse after. All right, we're at four minutes, Ivan. The clock is ticking. I we're know. talking more rinseless. Yeah. What about the wheels? So the wheels, we can use a foamer. Some all-purpose cleaner in there? Yeah, so it's an APC. We'll foam the wheels. Now, the reason I'm using a foamer as opposed to just spraying it on is the foamer is doing the agitation for me. Because every time one of those bubbles bursts, it's actually putting new APC on the surface. So that scrubbing bubbles commercial, well, they weren't lying. Quickly approaching five minutes into the rinseless wash. Five minutes in. <laughs> I will say that when I foam my car, for whatever reason, it takes me an hour and a half, and I'm a pro. I don't know why. I foam it, I spray it. So we're going to do... Uh, so the rinseless wash, we're using the Ultra Black Sponge. I sort of have an affiliation with it because I'm the one who designed it. And but, there's a video on my channel. I'll link it on the top right as well. Yeah. So basically, you don't want to be dripping like this with your sponge. You just want to be it on the verge of dripping. And then, start. Where and do you start and why? I like to start at the top and work my way down. Uh, it's kind of like when you're taking a shower. If you start at a certain part of your anatomy, as opposed to your face, well, you know. And everybody's got one of these. They're like opinions. So do the math. Uh, Ivan, surely you're scratching the paint by not pre-treating it. How no, I'm you? no, I'm not. So a rinseless works a lot differently than a soap. A soap is an emuls you know, an emulsifying solution. It emulsifies. That's great, but it doesn't really provide any lubrication. Now everybody's thinking, oh yeah, soap feels so smooth and lubricated. In reality, it isn't, and it isn't the wash process with soap that scratches the vehicle. It's the drying process. And one place that a lot of people forget to clean, underneath the mirror. I always like to flip it, <laughs> flip it forward. Yep. Oh, the if old, you want, yeah. The old flip rooney yeah. To get in there. There you go. How many times are you dipping the sponge? What is your process when you dip into your rinseless bucket? So one panel does one half of the sponge. One panel does one half of the sponge. Okay, how much pressure are you putting that sponge on? Zero. Okay. Again, I'm applying it to the surface. I am not scrubbing with the sponge. And why does this work? Why is this not messing up this paint? Well, first of all, the encapsulation of the, the product. The emulsifiers, they're breaking down the dirt and they're carrying it away from the paint. You're 
go into the rocker, man. Yeah. Just scratch up all the paint. And flip, flip the sponge. Okay. Let's get behind that door handle. Now, what all-purpose cleaner are you using? Do you like to talk brands or? No brands. I mean, can that uh, stain the coating on the rims or I mean? Not, you... not a high quality APC. So a lot of people, and you were one of these people, that use stuff that's actually designed for cleaning engines. I think you were the one of the ones using purple power or something like that. There was an era of my <laughs> life when I used said high pH bazookas. Yeah, and that is not a proper APC. I did enjoy, I do enjoy a nice high quality APC, I gotta tell you. It makes a difference. It's just tough because you want to buy the cheap products that do a good job and a lot of time you pay for quality and do you have a philosophy on that? Yeah, uh, especially for the professional detailer. Now, for the home hobbyist, use what you like. For the professional detailer, use what works. And when I say what works, there are times when you'll look at a product and it's a chemical that is dirt cheap, but it takes you like five minutes longer to do that operation than it would with a good chemical. That's costing you a lot of money to use that cheap chemical. All right, what are we doing here? You scrubbing a little harder on those rockers? Is your sponge getting full of crap? Like how do we, clean the sponge out. How does rinseless work when you dip it in that bucket? As soon as I dip it in, the rinseless is taking the dirt out of the sponge. So I don't have to worry about transferring from one, uh, one surface to another. These Subarus are taller than I remember. <laughs> I hate roof detailing, man, especially on these big trucks out here in Utah. Yeah. Yeah, in your shop there's like a lifted uh, ram. It looks pretty good. We coated it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of more normal than not. Okay, we got some clear coat issues on this bad boy, but here we are washing a car in real life. Yeah, it's on a Ferrari. Yeah, exactly. You know, not everybody drives a Ferrari. There are some people that actually enjoy driving Subaru. You being one of them. I but love my Subaru, man, but I drive a lot on a mountain canyon. I yeah. Need, I, need that, uh, I need that safety, man. And safety you, is sexy. That's what I'm saying. I'm so yeah. alive, that's a sexy thing. You know, and I drive a bus, so. There you go. Um, this rinse is drying on the panel. It's a little, a little scary. I be? Nope. It looks real grimy on that panel too, Ivan, when it dries. Yeah. Make me feel better about that. So we can do one of two things. You can stop washing where you are and start drying or just finish the job. So work one panel at a time. Yeah. Okay. I think I was a one panel at a time guy back in the day. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I went away from rinseless and I'm just trying to understand asking myself why you know I, maybe I thought it was well I like to I like to pre-treat with a foam cannon and then and then wash rinseless but this is a reminder that like you can do this at home without a hose and I think I forgot about the simplicity and the beauty of this yeah and there's some uh, detailers you know er, or internet personalities YouTube detailers that on their channel all they do is the foam cannon and all of that but in reality, on their own car, when they're not filming, they use a rinseless. And the reason they do that is because their viewership goes down when they use a rinseless. Okay, because this looks so grimy to me. What am I seeing on this paint? All these, you know, uh, almost water spotty type. Is that, what is that? That's the rinseless that's encapsulated the dirt and made it into these little polymer bubbles. You know I have to speak my mind. Yeah. That's what I do. But if you're concerned about it, you can do this. 
add a little more rinse on top. Perfect. Now drying, lots of different drying towels out there. I like a twist weave or a waffle weave. And we're gonna use a drying aid. Why? Because it's fun. What is, what is the drying aid you'd recommend? If we don't wanna go brand, like tell the person out there why a drying aid and, and what is this doing as you dry? So what it's doing is actually making the drying easier. So I'm not having to put the towel over the surface quite as often. And if you're using soap and water, the drying aid is even more important because it shouldn't be called a drying aid. In that case, it should be called a drying lubricant. And yes, we're purposely not showing you the label. So. Some of that Ivan secret sauce. All right, we are approaching 14 minutes, Ivan. Yep. I sometimes approach an hour, an hour and a half when I fold my car again. You don't think it's gonna take that long, but you get lost in the weeds and I suppose if we weren't talking and you were just cleaning, it'd be a little bit faster too. A little bit, yeah, but not that much. The one thing I don't like about these towels though is actually the thickness. Why? So I, I like to have a folded towel. Yeah, these are chunky, huh? Yeah. What's the one thing you think that detailers or do-it-yourselfers overthink when it comes to washing a car? The, you know, am I gonna scratch it? Well, yes, you are. Stop overthinking it. I, I talk to very high-end detailers everywhere. Yeah. You could have 10 buckets, the best soap, the best sponge, uh, 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 you know, totally, you know, reverse osmosis, whatever, the, the, you know, yeah. soft water. Um, you could have every fancy product and towel in the world. You're but still going to scratch the car. You touch a car, there's always going to be scratching danger. Right. And, you know, what I mentioned before, People think, oh, well, I pre-do it with a, you know, pre-rinse with a pressure washer. Well, you're actually scratching it then because you're moving that dirt around with no encapsulation, with nothing else. You're just literally taking that dirt under pressure and moving it around the car. This car's starting to get shiny. To me, this seems like a great way to wash your car your driveway at home every three out of four times right and then maybe once a month if you're like the crazy obsessed guy you spend you spend the time grinding out the wheel well stuff and you know inside the barrels and i know you can do all that too here yeah you actually can you can spray rinseless i think on the inside of uh, the wheel wells yeah just have some sacrificial towels right some tack sacrificial wheel towels and just sacrifice them to the dirt gods and you can wash them later but yeah you, you can sacrifice towels and get results with rinseless or all-purpose cleaner and then psi pump sprayer yeah but let's just look at let's look at how shiny the subaru is starting to look as ivan continues to drying aid and then dry the Subaru. So we started at 2.45, we're at about 16 minutes now. Uh, we've talked a little bit, probably took a little bit extra time. Yeah, and I'm not in any particular rush. You were saying that there was a guy who literally cannot leave his driveway without washing his car. Yeah, so when I had the shop, I had a customer that had OCD to the point where he literally couldn't make himself leave his driveway without washing his car, even though he had parked 15 minutes ago. And, you know, he was conscious it was a disease. But like at the same time... actual disease or...? Oh, yes, yes. He was diagnosed with OCD and, you know, the type of person that locks his... Uh, locks his door and then comes back and checks it five times. Yep. Hard to know what you see um, on camera, but oh boy. 
Yeah, I recently rinse and washed my car, and it was like, why have I not been doing this more, you know, in my driveway? Just because life gets so dang busy. Yeah. Um, because the results, especially when you're not detailing for somebody else, and I know this is a professional video, but it's also aimed for all of us, like, the results are great. I mean, the results you can get from this compared to a, um, a drive-through car wash, you know, oh, the yeah. quality, I mean, once we get this all shined up, I'm already seeing it. It's uh, fantastic. And Give the paint, oh, the paint on this is not, uh, shall we say, spectacular? No, it's pretty grimy. <laughs> no, not that. It's checked, and there's bird uh, etching and all sorts of fun stuff going on. So. Wait, a black car with black paint that sits in the high altitude Utah sun that hasn't been taken care of has issues? It, it happens, yes. Who knew? Who knew? Um, all right, give me your two-sentence elevator pitch for why rinseless washing is something we should consider. Time savings, energy savings, water savings, and better quality work. And the reason I say better quality is simply you have less chance of scratching with a proper rinseless technique than you do with soap and water. God, now I see the, the etching and the yeah. checking. But for being etched and checked, it sure is shining up nice. I mean, no joke. Yeah. Well, there's a nice big old rid scratch on the <laughs> driver door. No kidding, yeah. Is this more or less fun in your head than doing a traditional wash? Uh, it depends how you like your fun. So if your fun is washing your car and spending two hours in your driveway making the car look clean and sexy and all that, then no, it's not as much fun. If your fun is driving your car, then yeah, the less time you spend washing it, the more time you spend using it. We lost about half of that to the wind. Yeah. But I like that we're doing this on a cool day outside because it's the real world. Right. There's just too much fronting and flexing and pretending online. I like yeah. keeping it real. No egos involved. All right, we're about 20 minutes in. 20 minutes in. Let's just watch. Coming along nicely. Now, when I was in my shop, a rinse wash like this was under 10 minutes. But we were equipped for it and everything was convenient. Um, you know, everything was laid out perfectly in the shop for efficiency. You had a bucket on each side, probably more drying towels, not outside. Yeah, but real world, doing it in your driveway, half an hour, you're done. There's no way you get through a car wash I don't get through a whole outside detail car wash in under 45 minutes, you know, with a foam cannon, and more yeah. likely an hour. You don't think it's going to take that long, and then you're out there, you're spraying, and you're foaming, and you're rinsing, and you're you're drying. What I notice with this, too, is I'll get my master blaster out when I'm using a, when I'm using a hose. Yeah. Because you're getting water and soap and all the nooks and crannies, whereas here... You're not getting as much residual drip after the uh, after the clean, are you? No. So the paint is done. Yes, it is. And now walk me through the wheel. So the paint is done at less than 22 minutes. So yeah. About, about 21 minutes for a car wash because we've been dilly dallying. Um, so for the wheels, we sprayed the APC on it. We're simply going to take our wheel and body brush. Which you use after you rinse the wash, so you don't contaminate them. Yeah, or you can have a separate bucket if you want. But, and a high quality APC, if it dries on the wheel, it's not a big deal. Where, where this one did. And ideally, when you're cleaning wheels, have a hose. But, just for demonstration purposes, we don't have a hose. And yes, I'm putting the brush back in the bucket because I'm not going to wash another car with it. A lot of guys have a separate wheel bucket. I actually like that for my wheel yeah. brushes. I um, 
I did this mobile for years, man, and I would bring a steamer, and I'd bring a lot of towels, yeah. and I'd have a couple of buckets, and if I didn't have access to a hose, I'd bring gallons of distilled water, and I'd pre-fill my buckets before I left the house. Yeah. I mean, it's all possible, man. It's all possible. It's, uh... Makes me want to get back into rinses watching you do this. Look at this. And apparently I missed a spot when drying. That's all right. There's always the final QC check at the end. Yeah. Of course, us detailers are always obsessed with trying to chase perfection and. I'm sure a customer would notice that, but there's so many things that, well shoot, what am I to, who am I to say? I chase perfection. There's times to change, perf there are times to chase perfection, there are times to just have fun. Ooh, look at that quality, quality shine. Um, I'm not going to stop till this car's done, Ivan. I know. We are now at 24 minutes. I missed a whole quarter panel. Hey, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like maybe you were distracted by me reacting Yeah, it is a little bit, but hey. The nice thing about a rinse list, if it dries on the surface, it's not that big a deal. Because these are not water spots, they're polymer spots. We'll just add a little more of the drying lubricant. See how anything, they... Anything, um... Anything that you particularly love doing on cars, just over the years, like your favorite part about detailing? Polishing, paint. Yeah, me too. You know, that, that time with the rotary, and I'm a rotary user, but it's just like a meditation moment. More than anything else. I totally it's agree. It's just fun, it's relaxing. I love this brush. Is there a, a is that the old Optimum Wheel and Body brush? This one's from uh, the Rag Company, but yeah. Oh, cool. So you can get that at the Rag Company. Yeah. Not sponsored by the Rag Company. No, I really like that that green brush. I remember. Yeah, that. so it's a flag tip nylon brush. It's delicate enough to actually use on the paint. And if you go to uh, Pan the Organizer's channel, you actually see me using it on the paint of his car brand new Porsche, whatever it is. Yeah. And he didn't freak out because he's seen me use it before and he knows what it does, so. Crazy Canadian, man. He's Greek, so. He's Greek. Yeah. Well, he's Canadian, but. He lives in Canada. Yeah, I know. No, no. He's of Greek heritage. But just for an example of the scratches I was telling you about, can you see that bad boy? Oh, but look at that shine. Look, the reflection of Ivan in the paint. How about that? One, two, three, pan. Looking good, man. Yeah. So where are we on time? We are right now at about 26 minutes. I think we could do a clean 26 minute um, definitive. It took 26 minutes. I wonder how much of that, if you had been, you know, Efficiently working without me asking you questions. What do you think? 20 minutes is my normal wash time. 20 minutes. Our little Fiat, uh, we're normally under 15. So. And this is a solo job, but that's the reality for most people. Yeah. Okay, Ivan. So, I would I would say, uh, what was that, man? 20, 26 minutes. You think you could have cut it to 20? We'll say under half an hour. Let's say under half an hour. Yeah. That way. Yeah. That way we're talking about that real talk detailing. Nick from Hawks Pro Detailing, Mr. Ivan LaCroix. Detailers they, Business Academy. Detailers Business Academy on YouTube. Yep. What are your thoughts on this Subaru? It's a Subaru. Uh, no, no offense. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not a new car. It won't be ever again, but it looks good. It's shiny. It has protection thanks to the detail spray that's on it. And it's gonna stay clean. The rinseless, unlike a soap, doesn't leave any film behind, so you don't have that issue with it attracting more dirt. And you're posing next to? The LaCroix Cruiser. More to come on the LaCroix Cruiser and more to come.
going to do a sit down with Ivan. But yeah. uh, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. Both Nick and I will be answering them.